so welcome everyone to the first open telemetry community day uh, my name is austin parker and i'm liz hong jones you may recognize us from smash twitch hit open telemetry tuesdays every tuesday twitch.tv forward slash open telemetry every other tuesday now every other tuesday yeah we changed the schedule yeah, uh, this is actually our second Open Telemetry community event. Uh, we did a uh, observability uh, focused uh, event at the CNCF uh, uh, KubeCon last year, um, but this definitely is our first year uh, being able to do it as a official uh, as an official sandbox project, officially about Open Telemetry specifically, rather than about observability as a whole. Yeah. So today. Um... Again, we want to welcome you to this event. This is hopefully something a little different than if you've been to virtual conferences this year and you're expecting just uh, eight hours of Zoom. Well, you might be we getting eight hours of Zoom. We can assure you that we're but... as tired of that as you are. Like, we, yes. we want to have this be interactive. We want to have you really participate and share because everyone here is an expert, not just the people up on stage. So. Yes, we all learn better together, and so we've tried to make something that is a little more interactive than maybe what you're used to. Um, and we'll go through that at the end of these remarks. We'll kind of give you a tour of the platform and make sure everyone uh, understands how to use all the bits and bobs so that we can all make this the best open community community ever, which, since it's the first one, it will be by default. <clears throat> so a couple of housekeeping notes. First off, thank you to our sponsors. Uh, New Relic, Lightstep, and Splunk. Couldn't do it without y'all. Uh, both at a event level and also at a larger project level. And I believe we have lots of people in attendance, for, uh, lots of contributors in attendance, so give yourselves all a big pat in the back and thank you to your companies that generously uh, you know, donate your time. Yeah, donate your time to the project. The second uh, note, if you would like to tweet about this event, uh, I would love for you to do that because that makes the good serotonin in, in my brain when I see uh, people mention me on Twitter. So please use the uh, OTELCD hashtag on Twitter or other social media. And there's going to be um, a lot of opportunities to kind of chat and connect. And if you have questions that sort of flow over, you know, a time box for a breakout session or for the lightning talks later or for these keynotes, then We'd love to get all that kind of in the same place. So in the CNCF Slack, which you should all be in, there is a channel, uh, 3-otel-community-day. So that's where you kind of want to do a lot of the chat outside of like the Zoom chat or the breakouts. So if you aren't in there already, then join up. And with that said, I think, Liz, I think you actually mentioned this, you know, Whenever you're kind of doing a year in review or, or save the community or whatever, I think it's good to kind of look back where we've been, right? So let's go back. Let's yeah, rewind. Yeah, it's been a uh, fascinating year, uh, even if it worked for a pandemic. Um, remember when we were all able to get together in person? That was so yeah. weird, right? Was this this was wild, right? I look at this. I look at the picture here of the crowd, and I'm just like, people yeah, very, did that. People just energy, sat, right? Like <laughs> people sat right next to each other with no masks on. What is this madness? But yeah, so last year we did uh, the Observability Practitioner Summit uh, as day zero of KubeCon, and we did a live stream of the event. Uh, so now congratulations, welcome. You are all part of the live stream for this year. Uh, we also presented Open Telemetry to the world uh, and to the broader CNCF community on stage at the, Kube, at the KubeCon keynote. And there was also a maintainers panel and lots and lots and lots of workshops and talks about Open Telemetry last year. Um, at Coupon last year. But, you know, it, it isn't just a one-time event, right? Like open source development and governance is a longer term effort that we have to devote our energy to throughout the year. And there are a lot of important milestones that we should celebrate that we've accomplished over the past year. Yeah, so let's talk about the first one. So we spent a lot of time on Zoom calls and StreamYard and uh, and Lightstream, not to be confused with Lightstep, over the past year, as well as a lot of talking to each other on Gitter. Because you know, if we can't meet in person, at least we can see each other's faces on SIG calls. We can talk to each other and continue to drive the project forward. And I think what's really remarkable, and 
personally, I, I, I have some numbers on this in the later slide, but it's remarkable how little um, the pandemic and sort of world events have not, we haven't really missed a step, right? Like the project is from every metric that you can possibly imagine has actually done extremely well. And I think that's important to keep in mind. So let's talk about just some of the numbers, some of the, the high level stats here. We've added two people to the governance committee, two brand new members, um, congratulations. From, from companies that were not previously represented. So we're kind of diversifying the set of people on the governance committee, uh, both from a kind of diversity of the people and diversity of the uh, of their employer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, another woman. Congratulations to Alavita. We've also reached a milestone where we've over 200 companies have contributed code or um, documentation or issues or anything to the Open Telemetry Project, which is a huge milestone in terms of, I think, adoption and, and sort of the seriousness of the project from you know, businesses from people that use these this software in production, right? Or will be using this software in production. And it's not just, you know, America, right? It's a, a completely global project. We have con contributors in over 30 countries, more than that actually, but I stopped counting at 30. And our overall level of activity, both in terms of issues, uh, PRs, Lost Liz there for a second. Issues, PRs, um, commits has increased 400% year over year. So just comparing this time last year to today, we we're at a 400% increase. And that leads to over 1,400 individual contributors and over 110,000 contributions to the project in 2020 so far. And I want to be clear that when we talk about contribution here, uh, both DevStats and we uh, view it as important, just as important when people file issues, triage issues, leave comments on issues, as when people commit code, right? Like the project mm -hmm. is not just the set of committers, the project is everyone who has in some way made the project better. Yeah. And it's, I think it's uh, important to also note, like, it hasn't just been devs, right? We've seen project managers uh, get involved, helping to triage issues, helping to make sure that work is communicated clearly to both major stakeholders and the outside world um, to help coordinate sort of these big cross-cutting changes uh, up around the project. So it's it's really been a year of, I think, maturity for open telemetry. It's kind of gone from 20, 30, 50 people hanging around some Zoom calls and figuring out how to take these two disparate worlds and, and put them together into something that has its own identity and its own real arc that you can see. But wait, there's more. There's more. As the products matured, uh, it's not just been in sort of an organizational sense, it's also been in an actual like use of, you know utility sense, right? There's over 200 integrations, exporters, plugins for various components that have uh, been added to the Open Telemetry Registry. Not all of those are things that we maintain, right? As a project, a lot of these are actually third-party integrations that have been contributed, you know, that are maintained by people outside of the project, which is really cool to see. We, we also have really broadened the set of uh, languages that we support. When we announced last year, we had basically five or six languages that we were in beta for. Uh, but now we have a much more comprehensive set of support for uh, pretty much any language that you can uh, shake a stick at uh, that people actually use in production. Mm -hmm. The other exciting thing is that the Open Telemetry uh, line protocol, uh, well, I guess, or OTLP, uh, has really become mature enough that people can use it as the common way that they send telemetry data. And therefore, a number of people have stopped using custom exporters and just said, you know what, OTLP is mature enough that we can just accept and consume it directly, which is really exciting. Yep. And that also has really helped the interoperability story with the Open Telemetry Collector being mature enough so that people can use it as a Swiss army knife to both use open telemetry as well as older protocols and get all their data in one place. It's really kind of like a Swiss army knife. You know, it, it's the bridge from old to new and it's super exciting to see the collector mature and develop. 
all of this has led us to having a huge amount of you know public adopters and support for the project so that's everyone from you know major cloud providers who who are releasing distributions of, of open telemetry that kind of works with their stuff to people that are adopting open telemetry in production in their systems today as a way as to, end users which is really as end really users great. yeah so it's really on both sides of the equation you're seeing people jump into this with both feet which for a project that is still kind of hasn't had a general release yet is really impressive and it's all thanks to you to you internet Give yourselves a pat on the back. So, I feel like that's been a pretty good recap of the last year, wouldn't you say, Liz? Yeah, definitely. There are lots of things that have happened that we can't couldn't include in the slides, but I think that that's a good summary of kind of where where we're at. Uh, so now let's talk about what's ahead for us. Yeah. So, this is. I'm sure everyone, everyone that's uh, on this call that has a shall we say, OTEL contributor, probably understands um, how good we are with dates and times and estimating those. But let's see. Let's, let's we're, we're getting back. towards let's the pretend. end of the burn down. We're yeah. getting towards, we're getting the, end towards end the end. Like, it's easier to have more certainty when you have more of a kind of track record and trajectory rather than just, you know, throwing darts in the dark board. Yeah, I would say we've gotten a lot better estimation this year, too. Um, but let's look forward to what does the near future hold? Well, right now we're expecting, uh, we have release candidates for distributed tr the distributed tracing component, right? If you think about open telemetry, you know, for some of you that maybe are not as familiar with the project, you can kind of break open telemetry into some big cross cutting components, tracing metrics, logs, uh, context and tools. So tracing, which is, sort of the foundation of a lot of this, is very close to being done, um, or at least done enough for a 1.0 release. So we have release candidates of tracing in progress that was announced uh, several weeks ago, and I'm not gonna say a date, but hopefully by the end of the year, we'll see those release candidates be firmed up. The more work that we get it, get done on it, including today when we have a chance to all talk face-to-face -face synchronously, the faster it'll go. And let's see, on the metrics front, um, the aim is to get release candidates out in the first half of 2021, um, recognizing that metrics has been kind of a little bit further behind in terms of finalizing what the spec is going to be and therefore finalizing what uh, the SDKs need to do. Yeah. And we have a newcomer since last year, which is logging. Uh, we've added on the logging sake and discussion about logging specification. And that <laughs> is... And that will be uh, hopefully progressing into an alpha in the first half of 2021. Quick question from the chat. What's an SDK? So the SDK is the software development kit, right? It's a, it's the part of the code that makes the thing do. Uh, there's a specification for the API, which is the thing you actually program against. And then the SDK is sort of the implementation of that API. So yeah, I, to you, uh, person in the chat with a question, there's going to be some breakout sessions starting after these keynotes. One of them is going to be kind of open telemetry for beginners. I would certainly recommend you drop into one of those and uh, we'll be able to discuss all of that. So, so those are some of the telemetry formats yeah. that we aim to support over the longer term. And the <sighs> tracing is just the first of them. So we've got more coming. Yep, more, more is coming. But technical work is not the only piece of open telemetry. We also need to talk about the community, right? Like this, after all, is the uh, community introduction. So let's talk a little bit about what the community milestones we have that are upcoming. Yeah. So one thing I'm particularly excited about as a maintainer for the um, communications of SIG is really working on all of this community content. So we are working on sort of a visual asset library and a, a standardized design language, I guess you could say, for open telemetry. So that will be um, Creative Commons uh, licensed components about like, if you have ever had to build a slide deck about a uh, technical system, 
you might feel my pain of what does the icon for an open telemetry collector look like or a SDK, right? Like there's all these things and we want a way to kind of tell people about those things through, you know, iconogra iconography. So that people can have those shiny architecture diagrams, except for, you know, hey, this is AWS S3, this is Redis, right? Like instead, this is an OTEL collector, right? Like we need that visual library so that people can describe things. Yeah, so the we're, we're working we, on those. The other thing that we definitely have had a need for a while um, is that we've been developing workshops in a box uh, for the past year and kind of bringing those towards maturity so that more people can deliver workshops about open telemetry to the community so that we can expand our user base uh, very rapidly is going to be important once we're GA. Yeah. Uh, also, next year, there will be open telemetry 1.0. We'll have a big party, hopefully in person. And finally, um, we've applied for incub incubation. So this is a CNCF thing. Uh, incubation basically, right now, Open Telemetry is a sandbox project. Incubation means that we've basically achieved a new milestone in terms of the maturity and adoption of the project, which means we get more resources from the CNCF and also more credibility in the cloud native ecosystem. So please look forward for that or to that. And any other big community things you're looking forward to, Liz? No, I don't think so. I think that covers it pretty well. All right. So last thing then, I want to give everyone a little brief tour of the platform and make sure everyone understands what they should be doing um, so that you can kind of get the most out of this. So after this uh, next keynote, there'll be a break and you will be able to go under this main stage. I'll, I'll take you through this in the browser in a second, but there's this uh, breakout sessions planning and you can suggest a breakout session and you can also vote on breakout sessions. And those votes will tell us as organizers like what breakout sessions we should have. So be sure to go do that. Also, if you've done that and you're looking to sort of just um, have some voice chats or video chats with people, uh, we have this spatial chat networking. So this is actually really cool. You go into this and you kind of have an icon and you can move around and see where people are in this virtual room and chat with them. It's very neat. So let me actually show this. So if you're in this main stage, you'll see this breakout sessions planning. And in this, you can add a thing up here, so I'll let's say add one for um, workshops in a box. I would hit submit. And then my suggestion and you can would vote be on that too. Here. Right, so I could vote on this. You and the standard uh, rules of open spaces apply. Like you don't have to go to everyone that you vote for. You're allowed more than one vote, right? Like just yeah, vote you can something vote up for... if you might be interested in it and we will try to schedule things appropriately. Yeah, so there'll be, and what'll happen is after this uh, next break, before these breakout sessions start, we'll update all these titles here. So you'll know what breakout is where, and then you'll get to those, like you got to this, you'll click on the thing and then you'll have a join video. And there'll be moderators in each of these to kind of help facilitate the conversation. Um, and you can also uh, always post in the uh, Slack channel uh, if you would like to have people come to your breakout session or whatever. So I think that's about it. And we actually have another great talk coming up on the history of open telemetry. So I don't want to take up too much time. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming to Open Telemetry Community Day. We hope you have a great day and we will see you during the breakout sessions. Uh, yep. Enjoy this next talk.